All right, happy Monday, everybody. Hope everybody out there had a fantastic weekend and your weeks are off to a good start. We start off this Monday edition of Golden State Warriors today with some breaking news as Golden State has guaranteed Kevon Looney's $8 million contract for the upcoming 2024-2025 season. What does this mean for the Warriors? What does this mean for Looney, who's been pivotal in the Warriors' success over the last several years, being the ultimate glue guy for this organization? Well, of course, we're going to bring you that information here on the show. Of the $8 million that Looney will earn this year, $3 million was guaranteed before Monday. And we've talked about this plenty of times here on the show when we've talked about Kevon Looney here on Warriors today. The Warriors now retain his expiring contract through the upcoming 2024-2025 season. So the Dubs can simply bring Looney back. He's a center on this roster or... Kavon Looney could be used as a trade chip for Golden State to get some pieces back and also to save some money here. So in turn, this gives Golden State some flexibility. You want him on the team because he's been valuable to your squad. He's a good rebounder and he fits in nicely offensively. You can go that route. Fine. If you want to trade Kavon Looney and or Gary Payton the second, you can do that. So Kevon Looney and Gary Payton II in back-to-back -back weeks now, GP2 exercising that option. He's returning to the dubs, at least as of now. And then the contract becoming guaranteed for Looney does not necessarily mean that both players are going to be on this team this year. They could be used as trade chips this offseason or going into the NBA trade deadline. What should the dubs do with Looney? Let your voices be heard. Share your opinions with us. Type K for keep or T for trade down in the comment section. And as you venture down there, help us get to 63,000 subscribers. We are eight people away. And when the Warriors make a move, you know we have you covered. NBA draft, Wednesday and Thursday. We provide you coverage on that. Free agency beginning on Sunday. We'll be providing you with the best Warriors coverage once free agency gets underway as well. Could a big trade be coming for the Golden State Warriors? Let's talk about that here on the show. I'm Chase Sr. No matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. The Warriors reportedly want to use Chris Paul's $30 million contract to execute a trade. And just like the Warriors had to guarantee or make a decision on Kevon Looney's $8 million deal for this upcoming season by a designated date on Monday, June 24th, by June 28th, later this week, Chris Paul's $30 million contract becomes guaranteed. So could he get dealt in the lead up to that? And could he be used in a trade to bring a player back? Here's what Anthony Slater of The Athletic had to say about CP3 and his future with the Dubs. They've been actively searching for paths to larger scale upgrades using Chris Paul's non-guaranteed $30 million contract as a flexible tool. There's been talk with Paul about possibly pushing that guarantee date back from June 28th into July, if necessary, per league sources, which would only be telling Thompson, and that's Clay Thompson, to wait a little bit longer. So just like there is flexibility with what the Warriors did with Kevon Looney, either bringing him back or using him as a trade chip, Golden State can utilize some flexibility here with CP3. What it looks like and what it sounds like to me is that the Dubs understand what they have at stake, what's in play. And it sounds like Golden State wants to make a splash move this offseason. And the moves that have taken place, GP2 returning with that player option, Kevon Looney contract being guaranteed, they can be brought back, used as trade chips. Now with CP3, all of these moves are aligning because Golden State is trying to exercise and maintain some roster and financial flexibility here. From Anthony Slater more so, trade talks make Klay Thompson wait a little bit longer. Does this ultimately impact the decision that Klay Thompson can make, whether or not to return to Golden State, and what the Warriors want to do? What's the word I keep on mentioning here? Flexibility. And having flexibility as a business, as a basketball unit, especially when you're in hard financial times and you're trying to get back to a winning level, is of the utmost importance. And at the very least, it's very valuable here with what the Warriors are trying to do 
to help out this Steph Curry era right now. More from Slater on Clay Thompson. The Warriors have outwardly maintained their desire to bring Thompson back at the right price and in the right role, but have viewed this situation as business to sort through after various other roster building avenues have been explored. Part of the Warriors' calculus, it seems, is that Thompson could discover a lukewarm free agent market and eventually return at a bargain rate. Early indications are that the read of the market will be proven correct. And that's the second part of this flexibility here. If you're thinking about bringing back Clay Thompson, don't overpay. Don't offer him a contract that is disrespectful. Let the other teams offer him a deal. Let the other teams show off their value and their interest in Clay Thompson. See what Clay gets on the open market. And if no other team is blowing him away with an offer, what are his options? His options are to take less money elsewhere and leave the only place that he's known as home in his NBA career, or the option, which could prove to be valuable for Golden State, him returning to the Warriors at a lower price tag. They don't want to give him $30 million per year. They don't want to give him probably $25 million per year. What if they can get Clay for 20 mil? That's why waiting helps the dubs out, and this market looks promising for Golden State here. From my view, Warriors seem focused on a couple of things. Maintaining flexibility with GP2 Kavon Looney. Then they seem focused on the Chris Paul situation and how that could land a second star. What if they can land that second star? There's no market for Clay. It's dry, and he can come back as part of the team, not the second star. Would you like that? May I entice you on that type of situation? I'm intrigued by it. It's become apparent, too, that Chris Paul might want to play in Los Angeles. You have the Los Angeles Lakers hiring J.J. Redick. You have the Los Angeles Clippers, which are emerging as a potential destination. And those two teams make a lot more sense for CP3 at this point of his career than the Warriors do. Why? He could play a little bit more and have more of a role with these two squads here. Mark Stein, NBA insider, saying the Lakers' interest might not be unanimous. You have LeBron James and J.J. Redick. They understand the high IQ that Chris Paul has on the floor, and they're both teams in need of a backup ball handler and a guy who can spot start, come in off the bench, be a team leader, and just be that savvy veteran savant. Last year with the Warriors, CP3, I thought he played well, all things considered. He just did not fit. Nine points per game, 45% from the floor nearly, but almost 38% from three. He will have value elsewhere on the open market, but teams might not want to pay him $30 million. If I'm CP3, I am down for a contract restructure. I am down to go somewhere where I can chase that championship that I have not won yet. And I don't need to be making $30 million at this point in my career. There's also this as part of the Chris Paul conversation. Could it be a salary filler and a salary matcher as part of a trade for the Golden State Warriors to land Paul George? And let's segue to that aspect of today's show. You see Paul George here rocking the San Francisco jersey. Could CP3 be involved in that trade to bring the Warriors that second star? Could that second star be Paul George? What do you think? Should the Warriors trade for Paul George? Let me know what you think about this before we explore it in further detail. T for trade or P for pass. Before we get to that, today's sponsor, our friends at Fanatics. Draft hats are on sale right now at chatsports.com slash warriors. Draft hats. You can get this hat available in the flat brim new era style or the dad hat new era style, the color scheme, the logo. Really, really fresh. And if the Warriors maintain that pick at 52nd overall, their draft choice will be wearing this hat on draft night. You can wear it whenever the hell you want. Chatsports.com slash Warriors draft hats. Link is hanging out down in the show notes and attached to the pinned comment of today's video. Now let's talk about what we just queued up and teased up. Could the Dubs trade Chris Paul for Paul George? Bill Simmons on his podcast saying this about the latest Warriors trade rumors. If you're Golden State, you have this once-in-a-generation ticket with Curry. Are you really going to waste that? 
Like, are you just going to say, eh, we had a good run, we won in 2022, now let's have the mid-2010s Kobe Bryant retirement tour for the rest of the decade, basically. I don't think they want that. I don't think he wants that. So I'm watching them the most with trade week here. Now, of course, Bill Simmons is sharing his opinion here. He's theorizing. He always does a good job of putting out some feelers and maybe having some foresight for what could happen down the road. And he's talking about this in this manner. The Warriors need to get better. They need to capitalize on this Steph Curry era. They need to improve their team. And that's what I've maintained. The Warriors need to raise their talent level. You can't just let Steph Curry and his prime years waste away. He's still a top five player in the game. He's still an MVP candidate. He's had ankle issues in the past. You don't know when they could rear their ugly head. But he's still balling right now. He makes his teammates better. The most selfless superstar that we've ever seen in the history of basketball. His legacy is also on the line. He has four rings. Why can't he try to add on top of that? And doesn't he want to play for an organization that wants to go all in? That's what any of us want. For the company to support us. Brett Siegel saying this. Paul George's situation with the Clippers is very interesting. Should the Clippers decide not to pay George what he wants, it may not be an Eastern Conference team that pursues George. Keep a very close eye on the Warriors regarding George if Klay Thompson is to leave. Brian Windhorst on the Paul George situation. He could opt in and get traded by this weekend. That is something that is going to come ahead, to a head, in the next day or two. That's what Wendy said on Monday. So with the NBA draft on Wednesday and Thursday, free agency beginning on Sunday, there's a lot of moving parts here. And one of those moving parts could be Paul George deciding on his future at some point early this week. Now, when you talk about Paul George, does he fit? Does he not? That's a great debate. We know he's a really good player. We know he's also older with some injury concerns. He's a spectacular defensive player. He is 34 right now, nine-time All-Star, six-time All-NBA guy, four-time All-Defensive member, must decide on his $48.7 million player option by June 29th, later this week. And there are rumors of him accepting it, requesting a trade, where he wants to go, where he doesn't want to go. We don't know any of that. What we do know is what Paul George can bring to a basketball team night in, night out. He could score at all three levels, likes to have the rock in his hands, but he can play a little bit off ball. He has been injured a lot. He gives you stellar defensive play. This is a guy who can really help you in the playoffs and I think would fit nicely alongside Steph Curry. I still think that you could bring back Klay Thompson if you added Paul George to your squad. Playoff stats this year, you know, he's playing on a team with James Harden. You know, Kawhi Leonard was obviously injured, but is on that team, Norm Powell. They have a lot of scoring options. Terrence Mann. 19 and a half points per game, 41% from the field, almost 37% from three. He helped the Clippers win and extend the series in that game five in Dallas with an incredible fadeaway shot from the corner. He is capable of being a big time bucket getter. Now, he might not be the best fit, but no doubt raises your ceiling for the remaining years that you must capitalize on with Steph Curry. And that's where we're at with Golden State right now. You are at a talent deficit. And if this is a way to add some talent, we saw Kevin Durant come in and it worked when people were saying, there's only one basketball. It's only one basketball. But when you have Steph Curry and when you have this team-oriented approach, you can make it work. Other teams interested in Paul George, Orlando Magic, New York Knicks, Golden State Warriors, Philadelphia 76ers. I think these are the teams that you should look out for seriously pursuing Paul George. They have money. They have assets. They have a need, and they're playoff contenders. Here's what Bill Simmons put together as far as his trade idea. And some of you might not like this. Warriors receive Paul George. The Clippers get Chris Paul, which we talked about. You got to include Jonathan Kaminga. Wing for wing, and the Clippers are going to want a legitimate piece back. And then as part of that salary filler too, Gary Payton the second, and you're probably going to have to give Paul George a contract extension. Via Michael Scotto, hoops hype. Kaminga will likely be a warrior going forward unless he's needed in a trade package for an all-NBA player. What is Paul George? An all-NBA player. So would you make this trade A for accept, D for decline? Join the conversation as always down in the comment section and let us know what you would do if you were heading basketball operations for Golden State.
Don't forget to hit that sub button. Closing in on another milestone here. We'll be back this week every single day with so much content, you don't want to miss it.